evening class. Today we begin with a new chapter in history, the spread of new ideas. And if you remember, just now I have sent you the uh, exercises of civics and history chapter. If you are supposed to do, you are supposed to do the glossary of this chapter, spread of new and MCQ and civics also. I have sent you the PDF. I hope you all must have done. As and when you finish, leave a message in the group that you have finished. Then maybe on Friday or Saturday, I will decide up a date and I'll collect the PDF. But at least 20 children should finish the work and write there so that I can give a date. So now we begin with this spread of new ideas. During the 6th century BC, many religious changes were taking place in various parts of the world. This was a period when many, many religious teachers Philosophers and thinkers lived. Their ideas made revolutionary changes in all aspects of life. In India, too, as many as 62 religious groups developed in the Gangetic Plain. Now, here they are talking of the 6th century BC. During, during this time, many thinkers, many believers, many religious teachers and preachers they lived at this time. And it is believed that nearly 62 various religions grew up in India at this time. And prominent among them were the two, basically, the Buddhism and the Jainism. Now, two great men, both in this period, that is 6th century BC, they preached love, equality, non-violence, and truth. So their basic religious forces were child, please close your mind. They preached about love. They preached about equality. They preached that we should be non-violent. We should not be hurting others. And truth. That means honesty. So these were the basic pillars of their teaching. These two main men were Gautam Buddha and Vardhaman Mahavira. Now their teachings gave birth to two new, two new religions. Now Gautam Buddha, from his name came up the religion known as Buddhism. And from Vardhaman Mahavira, he started Jainism. So now we first go into the details of Buddhism. Buddhism was basically a religion which was founded in the 6th century BC. And Underline Gautam Buddha. Gautam Buddha was the founder of the new religion called Buddhism, which came into uh, existence in the 6th century BC. Now, Buddhism spread from India to various other parts, like in, to Central Asia, to Sri Lanka, Tibet, Southeast Asia, as well as to East Asian countries such as China, Korea, and Japan. So Buddhism had a spread not only in India, but also outside India, covering Central Asia and East Asian countries. So we talk of Gautam Buddha and his early life. Let's see what it is. Buddha's real name was Siddhartha. Please underline Siddhartha. He was born in the Sakya, Shakya clan, uh, Shakya Jana, and was a Kshatriya by birth. You remember earlier the Mahajanpadas and Janpadas when we talked of this Shakya Jana came into being, the Vaji Confederacy, if you remember. So it was a republican form of government here in Shakya. And they were the, the Shak Shakya Janas, that means the republics. And by birth, Siddhartha or Gautam Buddha was Kshatriya. His father, Sudodhana, was the chief of the Sakya clan. Underline his father's name, Sudodhana. And he was the head of the Sakya clan. Then Siddhartha was born at Kapilavastu. Please underline Kapilavastu. He was born in Kapilavastu. Please underline the year 563 BC. His mother, Mahamaya, died soon after his birth 
he was brought up by his mother's younger sister maha prajapati so she uh, the mother uh, of siddhartha who was mahamaya she died at the time of siddhartha's birth so he was in his early childhood deprived of his mother's love and was the younger sister of his mother known as maha prajapati underline at the time of his birth asya aista asita forecast that the baby would either become a great king or a great saint but siddhartha's father wanted him to become a great king he shielded his son from religious teachings and knowledge of suffering human suffering so now when he was very young when he, at the time of his birth a yogi or a sanyasi had come as it a means a sanyas come proclaimed he forecasted that this child is very lucky he he is born with lovely stars and he could either be a saint a well renowned great saint or he would be a great king now since the father wanted sudodhana siddhartha's father sudodh wanted him to become a great king so what he did was he kept him in uh, you know from all he kept him away from all the religious teachings and knowledge of human suffering he brought him up with all the kingly pleasures so he wasn't knowing the outside world much as siddhartha reached the age of 16 he was married to yashodhara underline the name yashodhara wife of siddhartha so at a, at a very young age of 16 he was even married yashodhara gave birth to a son rahula now they siddhartha and yashodhara had a son called rahul okay ma ma yes yes Ma'am, I did not able to see your screen. Others can see. Yes, Now can you see? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now I can yes, see. Yes, ma'am. And now I can see. Okay. Okay. One day, one day, Prince Siddharth on a ride with his chariot, charioteer Channa saw an old man. a sick man and a dead man so now what happened one day was that when siddhartha was going on his chariot that means apne rath par ja raha tha and who was the charioteer that means who was driving the rath he was a man called channa underline channa he was his charioteer and there he saw these three pathetic pathetic sights he saw an old man he saw a very old man okay then another sight he saw a sick man a man who was sick and then the third sight he saw on the road was a dead man he was greatly disturbed and he sought to overcome old age illness and death by living the life of an ascetic now when he saw it, uh, these three sights he saw them for the first time in his kingdom he had not seen any old person why because his father was at, was a young man and the soldiers and all who were surrounding him were young he had never seen a very old man walking with a stick such an old person he had not seen then secondly he had never seen a sick man so badly especially when a person is poor the sickness is to the upper levels why because he is Uh, he is deprived of the money and the proper medication so he had never seen a sick man also and then the dead body now obviously the king had brought up siddharth in a very very luxurious way that he had not seen these sights ever so when he saw these sights for the first time when he was roaming around on his chariot with his charioteer channa he saw these sights and he was very disturbed and he never wanted this old age illness and death to be the part of living so he decided that if the life is so miserable 
let me just concentrate on living a pure life and so he decided to be a sanyasi ascetic means a sanyasi at the age of 29 imagine he got married at the age of 16 and by the time he came to the age of 29 a young age siddhartha left his palace in order to become a monk so he left all the worldly pleasures of his kingdom and decided to become a monk monk is again a sanyasi for several years he wandered from place to place now from one place to another he was moving around ultimately he sat beneath a peepal tree in gaya and began to meditate now after roaming around a lot then he finally reached a place called gaya again if you remember it is in among the mahajanpadas and janpadas when you were marking it is somewhere very close to patliputra okay and began to meditate after many days of intense meditation he discovered supreme knowledge and attained enlightenment that means after meditating what is meditation to sit silently and dhyan lagana jise kehte hain ishwar mein dhyan lagana so he sat when he reached gaya a place there he sat under a peepal tree and started meditating and after intense meditation he discovered supreme knowledge aisa nahi hai ki koi gyan tha jo potli mein band karke gir pada ped se no it was knowing within the knowledge of of you know supreme power the ultimate recognition that yes what we are is a gift of god so all these things made him you know attain knowledge and attain wisdom and he got enlightened enlightened him they get the gyan ko prapt kar lena okay so he got enlightenment and gautam buddha from that day was known as buddha or the enlightened one so here underline buddha buddha means enlightened one one who is enlightened one who is full of wisdom full of knowledge so the people tree under which he gained knowledge in bodh gaya is known as mahabodhi tree now gaya now is known as bodh gaya okay in recent times it is known as bodh gaya so the place where he got enlightened that people tree is now known as mahabodhi tree underline that only that particular people tree not every people tree is called mahabodhi gaya mahabodhi tree okay it is only that particular people tree under which he sat down for med- meditation and attained enlightenment that tree is known ever since then is known as mahabodhi tree buddha preached his first sermon at sarnath underline this the first sermon that was given to uh, given by him was at a place called sarnath which, which is now near varanasi it is known as ghat it is known as chakra parivartan is underlined dharma chakra parivartan that means that was the turning point in his life where he started preaching setting in motion the wheel of dharma this is the meaning of it that means dharma ka chakra chalana buddha died at the age of 80 in 483 bc he is underlined the year in which he died 483 bc and he was 80 years of age that means he was quite old when he died now the place where he died was kushinagar underline that the kushinagar in kushinagar district of uttar pradesh that means the present uttar pradesh district of the state kushinagar comes and fall okay now we take on to the next heading teachings of buddha the main teachings of buddha are explained in four noble truths and eight fold path now the four noble truths are whatever he taught is just compiled into two sections first is the four noble truths are jeevan ki sachaiya and then eight fold path that means to attain those noble truths 
जीवन की सच्चाई पाने के लिए क्या राह है क्या रस्ते हैं पाथ क्या है दीज आर द एट फोल्ड पाथ तो फर्स्ट द फोर नोबल ट्रूथ द वर्ल्ड इज फुल ऑफ सफरिंग नाउ वी ऑल नो दिस होल वर्ल्ड स्टिल वी आर लिविंग वी हैव सम ऑफ दी अदर प्रॉब्लम so that is why he says that the first point is the world is full of suffering then the second thing he says the cause koi bhi safar kar raha hai kyunki uske andar ikshaa hai uske mujhe ye chahiye mujhe wo chahiye so this desire is causing suffering oh i wanted a playstation now this is your desire now because of this desire once your parents are not giving it to you you are feeling bad and this feeling of badness feeling of discomfort is called suffering so first thing the world is full of suffering even at your level your biggest suffering is oh we have to study and you are suffering now the cause of suffering is desire now you desire to get good marks that is why you are suffering ki oh god padhna hai now to end suffering third point to end suffering one must get rid of desire iksha ko khatam karne se suffering khatam ho jayegi that means if you start thinking ki no i don't need good marks i need knowledge whatever is taught let me know it properly even if i do not score good marks let me know the syllabus properly let me not cheat while i am studying let everything get into my brain now this is a better thing to think than to think ki oh i must get good mark because that is that good mark is a desire and that is why there is a suffering when you are studying but once you decide to put an end to your desire and you think wisely then your suffering will end So I repeat the first three points. The world is full of suffering. Then the second point says the cause of suffering is desire. And the third point says to end suffering, one must get rid of desire. And then the fourth point to end desire, one must follow eight fold path. Now he is saying to end desire. भाई ये चाह के हमें good marks चाहिए. इसको खत्म करने आसान बात नहीं है. because in this world the cutthroat competition and everybody is trying to get good marks and achieve good rank how can you just say you know i don't want so to follow to end the desire we must follow eight fold path that means eight right ways which you should follow so that your desire can end iksha khatam ho and what are those eight fold path right belief that is whatever you are believing should be right it should be in right direction right thought that means your thoughts should be pleasant should be you know correct they should not be evil ki acha acha ma'am to dekh nahi pa rahi hai chalo cheating karke ye answer likh le this thought only is wrong then right speech your words that you take out from your mouth should be right and correct and virtuous then right act whatever action you do whatever action you perform should be a right conduct you know then right livelihood your means of income to earn your living should be right chori chakari karke dhan nahi kamana chahiye then right effort your right amount of effort should be put for your exam your best effort instead of watching movies you should give your effort to at least learn those answers then right memory you should have only the pleasant memories to be stored us dost ne mujhe gaali bakki thi now you don't have to remember this because finally you are calling him your dost your friend so right memories should occupy your mind and then last is right meditation that means ishwar ka jo dhyan lagana hai jo उस समय पर जब आप ईश्वर से ध्यान लगा रहे हैं उस समय ओ गॉड प्लीज मुझे अच्छे मार्क्स दिला दीजिए दिस इज नॉट राइट मेडिटेशन राइट मेडिटेशन इज सेल्फलेस वे यू डू नॉट आस्क फॉर एनीथिंग बट यू गेन नॉलेज इन रिटर्न सो ऑल दीज थिंग्स व्हेन यू फॉलो द एट फोल्ड करेक्ट पाथ 
then you attain a check then you are able to control your desire once you are able to control your desire you put an end to your suffering and once you put an end to your suffering you attain enlightenment we stop here for today and we will continue with the next two paragraphs or should i finish off let me finish off this heading following the eight fold path purify the mind and help attain nirvana now he is saying that once you follow these eight fold path you attain purity of mind the mind becomes very pure and you attain nirvana now what is nirvana it is freedom from the cycle of birth and rebirth that means you attain moksha nirvana means moksha in hindus moksha is the word which says ki okay aap sari duniya ki jo sachcha aur ikshaaye hain un par kaabu pa lena that is called nirvana then buddha stressed on ahimsa ahimsa means not to hurt anyone non violence non violence means that one should have no ill feelings against one another it should be practiced with purity of thought speech and action he also criticized the caste system which was prevalent at that time he laid stress on love and compassion all human beings should be lovely loving each other and should be compassionate towards each other to living beings in thought word and deed in your thoughts in your words and in your actions you should be nice loving and compassionate so these were the teachings of buddha which he emphasized i hope i'm clear till here yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma